Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. It is Thursday noon hour, folks. Ted Ralston here hosting our show, Where the Drone Leads, at Think Tech Hawaii in Honolulu. Actually, we transpose ourselves to the Kwajalein Atoll for today's show. And uh, in, a, in an incredible uh, turn of events, we have three excellent gentlemen here representing Kwajalein here with us. We have the mayor of Kwajalein, Harata Kubo. Hello, Ted. We have the director of education, for the atoll, that would be Jelton and Jane. Okay. And we have Scott Paul, who is the city manager for Kwajalein. So thanks very much for coming on to the show. Came all the way across the Pacific to come to our one half hour show, right? And I like that. Actually, we have Greg Nakano, who a lot of you, our viewers know, a PhD candidate at UH, sitting in the background here. If we go <laughs> off, offline in any way, he'll fix that for us. But uh, if the table was bigger, we'd, be have, we'd have Greg here with us. And I think we need to talk to our our production staff here about bigger table or two layers or something like that because <laughs> this show is so popular so many people want to be on it that we need bigger space anyway uh, thanks for coming on gentlemen this is your first time on the show but we can actually get you on uh, by Skype when we're when you're back in the islands mm -hmm. uh, at, at, as time is appropriate but why would we have Kwajalein present here at the city administration level at the mayor level at the Commissioner of Education level on our show about drones. This is actually kind of an incredible coming together of, of, of initiative, of STEM, and of opportunity, and NASA funding, and, and once again, the initiative of Greg uh, Nakano sitting in the background here. We're talking about a program using drones in the islands to generate hands-on collection of information dealing with awareness of what's coming at the islands. Uh, that the in individuals in the schools and in the homes can actually participate in collecting information about their own circumstance and then try to figure out together, together what to do about it. Mm. So drones, an amazing uh, opportunity here and something we wouldn't ever have thought. Uh, and, and we must thank NASA for having funded a program called EBSCOR which will help us move forward. Mm -hmm. But from the perspective that you got, Mayor, uh, what, what's coming at, at the islands? What's coming at Kwajalein? What's coming at the islands within the atoll in terms of future issues in the environment here that, that we need to hear about more and that you can advise us on by this means? Okay, Ted. Uh, to do this, um, I'd be more comfortable if I um, speak my own language. So these two point on me will maybe Let's do interpreting that. Okay. or translating. We'll translate. Okay. Every word uh -huh. is going to come out of my mouth. Okay. Uh, Let's do it. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. Kwajalein is, um, or Hibai, is one island. One of 98 one island, or something like that? Yep, but one island is one, one mile, so I'm going to speak my own language. Hibai is an energy leader. You are going to it. Translate. Iba is a small island. Where we come from, Iba is a small island which is one mile long, and it's so densely populated that there's not enough space for even opportunity to arise out of. So. Uh, there's there's about roughly 11 to 15,000 people on Ebay and the purpose of our stay here our, our uh, trip here is to find opportunities that can we can offer for the, ch the children of Ebay okay our priorities are number one priorities Okay, we build the future. And mayor's in a, the mayor's uh, priorities during his tenure would be for educate creating more uh, reasonable and how do you say it? Uh, practical um, education for the people of Ibai, and also health 
And these are the two major priorities that he's working on right now. Okay, so education is the key to understanding what's coming at us in the future, yes. and health is the, is the product of having done the education properly and having done some kind of remediation yeah. in such property. Mm -hmm. And then the operating the education system, uh, which is where Jolton fits in the picture, is sounds like it's key mm -hmm. to achieving the mayor's goals here. Yes. And then you have yeah. to execute the plans that come out of that as city manager. And so all there's ways here. That's why the, the, whole, the whole nation is represented here uh, yeah. by you guys coming on this trip. Yeah. So, tell us about the kind of threats that are coming. Uh, we understand it's a, there's a number of small islands in the atoll, and you're in situations of very low islands, so they can't take much in terms of sea level rise. And okay. The uh, city manager, can you go ahead and uh, go ahead and elaborate on that one? Come on, man. Thank you, man. I think That's your job. Okay. <laughs> <Good> job. <laughs> Uh, the threats that we're facing right now is basically climate change. Mm -hmm. We're the first of climate change. I know that it's knocking on uh, Hawaii's doors, but right now we're living climate change. Mm -hmm. We're living inundations, we're living uh, erosions, we're living sea level rise, and now it affects our food and water sources back home. Since these are low-lying highlands, we do not have mountains. So our, our major freshwater source would be our uh, waterlands. And since water uh, sea level rise is come, is is happening, it it affects our drinking water source. So we've uh, we've gone through other ways of other means of uh, producing water by uh, reverse osmosis units, and that's our basically what we're depending on right now. But it still doesn't help with our crops on the outer islands, which do not have this mm -hmm. type of. Uh, technology, except for Ebi, which is, is where that we are on. But there are some other islands on Kwajalein Atoll that are, uh, that are populated that do not have this type of technology and do not have this type of uh, uh, program that uh, in regards to food security and water security. So these are other things that we want to address through this drone program that uh, NASA has escorted, NASA grant that we're engaging in. And, and with this drone program, we should be able to start measuring some of the factors that are going on, uh, at, at least characterize the landform, characterize the shape, characterize mm -hmm. uh, water uh, mm -hmm. locations and such, and observe over a period of time yes. the trends mm -hmm. of what's going on. Yeah, because uh, yeah. by 2023, the Compact of Free Association ends. <laughs> except for the economic uh, package that goes for Quadrant. It goes all the way to 2066 with a 20 year uh, mm -hmm. option of renewal to 2086. However, during this time period from, from now until 2023, we want to establish some data that we can, uh, with these types of programs, uh, mm -hmm. with this program, uh, the escort grant, that we can produce after 2023 in order to seek out other assistance, if ever needed. But at least we have data that can actually tell us how uh, climate change is affecting the islands. And uh, I'm sure that with this type of data, it all ties into not just um, uh, do GCF, uh, uh, GCF mapping and all that, but it also ties into the education factor and health factor. It could, it could also be, um, you know, we have a project coming up, the the shoreline protection, uh, pro mm -hmm. protection project within the next couple of years, and um, I think these uh, data that will, will be coming out of these project that the students are will be doing, you know, the DGM, DEM, uh, digital elevation map. Right. Can, DEM, right? Yeah, we could use those. Uh, uh, data to see where the it's really affected badly, and we can advise the contractors to you know make that uh, protection s stronger on that side of the island. So actually, that that information you collect could be used to drive the models that are used to determine what the reconstruction has to be, or the re mm -hmm. what the whatever the reme remediation might want to be. In fact, something just came to mind as we're sitting here talking. There's a guy uh, who used to work at Bellows Field on Winward, Oahu. Uh, that is uh, an Air Force uh, Recreation and Marine Corps training ground on the other side of this island. 
Craig Gorsuch. I would like to hook you up with Craig Gorsuch. He now works, I believe, in the Navy side of the house. I don't know, Greg, if you know if you've met him or not. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Craig has done about a five-year environmental remediation on the sand dunes and the beach area at Bellows mm -hmm. and has observed mm -hmm. the relationship between the retention of sand and the vegetation that's growing there, the type of vegetation, the big trees. We have these uh, imported... Uh, uh, Australian uh, ironwood trees, which are make the sand uh, storage very difficult, uh, and he oh. removed those, believe it or not, and found the sand process naturally powered has returned, mm -hmm. and he's looking at beach vegetation as opposed to trees as mm -hmm. a way to, uh, unlike what you might think, actually make the beach and the dunes more healthy. So I will absolutely put you guys in touch with Craig. Maybe even how long are you going to be here this trip? Uh, uh. Um, I'm going back tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. All right. You guys, have, you guys gonna have. We have email, so we'll Tuesday. put you in touch with Craig and, and let his environmental work on Bellows Field have influence to the extent it can on you. And we've used, actually used drones there too mm. Uh, mm. to collect the the uh, DEM, the overhead imagery uh, of uh, what the current situation is, in order to have a comparison basis for the future. Okay. So. Uh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so we have some things here we can offer I hadn't thought of before that, that would, uh, they're, I would call them uh, quickly executable and not rocket science, but they, they lead to a great understanding that can be put in the hands of people uh, right away. And so uh, we're, we're going to take our first break here, in fact our only break, and we'll get back after one minute and talk about how we take these steps forward. Okay. okay. All right. Still the noon hour on Thursday, folks. Ted Ralston here downtown Honolulu, momentarily transposed to Kwasalein Atoll uh, with uh, three gentlemen who are basically running the whole show in Kwasalein these days. In fact, while well, you're here, I wonder who's in charge, right? We have <laughs> <laughs> first of all, thanks for coming on. We have Thank you, Ted. Dalton and Jane and Scott Ball. Yes. And uh, we have the commissioner of education, we have the city manager, and we have the mayor of the entire atoll here, a very critical area in the central western Pacific. Mm -hmm. And we were talking before the break about the threats that are coming at you. You mm -hmm. identified the threats, and, and Scott then amplified them to some extent. And, uh, and uh, you know, and, and we talked about what, you, what your suggestion was, was to use this drone program in the hands of the education system, distributed to the, the the kids and their families who may have an interest and may have an appeal for this technology to use use that to illustrate to everybody what's going on, not just the island, but to the world, frankly. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So how do we actually start something like that? Because editorially, we don't have anything like that here. We have little clubs, we have small groups of people, three or four in a school or something like that, but we don't have anything organized across an entire school system dealing with something as critical as what you're dealing with. So. Assuming we can, uh, we have the, the, the capability, the knowledge, and the equipment, how do we actually take something like drone functionality into your school system and get it to, to take root and become self-managed and, and self-executing? Uh, Don't you. feel any pressure. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, what well, we have, uh, we, in partnership with uh, 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 UH Manoa, um, NASA and Gua uh, University of Guam and uh, Carlos and Marshall Islands. 
and through Carlos and Marcel as the drone projects comes to Guadalin, to the Guadalajara school system. What we are trying to establish is to uh, uh, get uh, interested young groups of uh, students, maybe sophomores and juniors, uh, maybe 25 and in, in, in all from from all the schools, uh, public and private schools, in on eBay to um, to start. Uh, we want to get them to get get their interest in uh, learning this technology, and actually to build it. And after building it, to fly it and take like like I said, elevation map of the shorelines of our shorelines. And these the the the, the idea behind the uh, the reason why we the mayor and the city manager and myself we jumped and grabbed this project was. Uh, our island has been known, or, or the region, uh, the region has been known as the the second lowest when it comes to uh, our national standardized test results. So we think with with the uh, innovation of STEM uh, uh, mm -hmm. education, like the drone project and um, these hands-on uh, activities will bring back that motivation that the, the, the students themselves are losing nowadays. Because like uh, when we were, uh, we, we are all island boys and our ways of learning back then was by observation and by actually doing it. Uh, that, Perfect, that, that for the drones. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. nowadays we're like stuck in a one wall, one four wall room try to learn from books and ah, kids are uh, how do you say the they, adapted they, way of yeah. the, the adapted the western learning. way of learning okay <laughs> <laughs> and that took took away the hands on and the tactile right. feedback and the yes. expression of that correct uh, interacting with the mm -hmm. yes. environment kids we can are fix that yeah. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, okay. To bring all these uh, projects let, me, the let me just say this <laughs> back then the the so-called traditional way of uh, learning, uh, like the teacher stands in front of the school and lectures, uh, the classroom and lectures us during uh, while we sit and take notes. I was bored. I was bored <laughs> back then. Hey, you're yeah. not the only one. Let uh, me uh, confess that one right here. Okay. It's, it's yeah. modernizing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. So. So now, getting back to jail, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to point that okay, out. Okay, you got it. <laughs> so, project-based learning. Yeah. That's yes, what we're talking yes, about, project-based learning, mm -hmm. which is maybe what was done in the past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> project-based learning, uh, place-based learning. Place-based learning, okay. Yeah. Uh, where Threat-based learning, in this case. Yeah, mm -hmm. We get the students to go out yeah. into the field, and that's how they will, by experiencing what they're learning. In place. It, it, that's, that's cool because, uh, as you say, we don't do that with the four walls. But there's another side to this, uh, if I can suggest. Yesterday we s witnessed this in the um, in Domarat Asimov's uh, uh, lab. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Evan Kamamura was sitting there on the computer dealing with the different gains and compensations in the flight control system and observing the behavior changes on the drone because of that technical change. So there is a second layer in here as well, and that's how does this drone actually work? What's inside of it? What's the math going on there? What's the means by which it does what it does? And is there a better way to do it? Is there a more efficient way to do it? Is there a way that works better in the hands of the user? So there's, that is to me is a fascinating subject and get, get some kids interested in, in that because uh, the technology evolution that's gonna be required for drones requires workforce development, mm -hmm. requires the folks mm -hmm. who understand mm -hmm. the insides as well as how the thing operates on the outside. So, and it's, uh, it's, it's good that you brought that up because, uh, and maybe Jeldon can, uh, Mar Mary and Jeldon can really elaborate more on and then, uh, what, what, what our goals are. Because the overall goal is for us to create a pathway from the elementary level, mm -hmm. all the way up to the university level, even PhD. And uh, we, the drone, this drone project is just the gateway. Is the, is, we want to use it as a gateway to stimulate interest from the grassroots level, like the elementary students, middle school students, because uh, if I remember, if you cannot get the student interested in this, uh, in, in uh, engineering or any other types of uh, field, by the time they're in 
uh, middle school, mm -hmm. then it's a it's a lost cause. And in, by the time the Owens are in middle school, the yes. island is going to be ten years farther down the road. There you go. Uh, which we have right. to fix. Yes. Right. So that up. pathway that we, uh, the mayor wanted to create <coughs> from the grassroots level all the way up to uh, PhD level, all that. This is something that we want to establish right away. And uh, Geraldine can uh, elaborate more on how we want to, uh, how these uh, programs fit into it, uh, these uh, building blocks leading up to the uh, university level. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's gonna, <laughs> a lot of work, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think right here on the show, they just, they just obligated themselves to, yeah. set, to serve this mission mm -hmm. um, for a while here. Yeah. Oh, man. We, we have so much work to do. We yeah. have so much work. Okay. We got to do it. Yeah. Uh, That's why we're here. Yeah, we, besides, besides the drone project that we're, uh, we're doing, we have other STEM ideas that we want to bring mm -hmm. uh, to our students, like the marine science. Uh, yeah, uh, and you saw some of that yesterday, I think, mm -hmm. at, the, at uh, Zach Trimble's lab. Yes, marine yes. science activities that will be done during our summer camp in 2018 in July. We have a summer camp that will, is coming up. We're trying to fit in the drone uh, education summer camp, uh, uh, marine science, um, Ebay Sailing Club and uh, mm. uh, theater, uh, drama <laughs> into into that uh, one. So all of these are, you know, active, you know, way of learning. That's 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 way, that's how we can get our students to to be motivated to learn. I'm glad you brought in the theater and expressive arts aspect. Uh, I think we don't pay enough attention to how important that is, at least in my personal education and such. And often, oftentimes, engineers and scientists are have a difficulty expressing themselves mm -hmm. or reacting to how people need to have information provided. If we ran them all through an acting class, mm -hmm. they might be one step closer mm -hmm. to being able to communicate in a dynamic environment in a way that isn't quite what they had what they had thought about in the first place. In fact. Uh, going back in the history of engineering, basically a lot of what is in engineering today is, uh. is characterizing observations people made in the past using terms that the artists actually created, like force and thrust and work and energy. Those aren't terms that came out of engineering. They came out of philosophy, mm -hmm. and then engineers figured out, okay, there's probably a structure we can wrap around that word, now we'll calculate how to do it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, there's a tie between engineering and, and art that uh, I, I think in our modern situation we've separated somewhat and you outlined a path that connects it all together <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a very critical and, and timely environment, I might say. So the, the other thought that goes through my mind, if I can ask you, uh, the kids say seven, eight, nine years old, you know, second, third, fourth grade, something like that, they're going to be starting this program. Their perception, they, they can't have a perception that there's a, a threat coming or a risk coming. They, they may have heard that, but they don't know how to yes. internalize it. They don't know how to make it personal. Is that something that you will strive to do in this drone project, to measure something, measure how the changes are occurring, and, and let them express that in a threat that they can, that they can aren't frightened by, but they can be rationally inspired to go work on? Well, before you go... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Wait, wait, do we have... Uh, Energy engineering in Ireland. Okay, well, uh, not yet, but uh, I was going to mention the uh, resolution that we talked about. Yeah. So there's a resolution, resolution that we're uh, planning on passing this coming uh, full council for Kwajalein Atoll. Uh, it's about incorporating climate change into the curriculum. For the public school, ah. for the school systems back in the Ebay. Mm. Okay, so you have a framework in which yes. this information yeah. can yes. fall, and that'll that'll actually tie them down. It'll tie them down <laughs> to make <laughs> sure it, gets it has done. to perform now. Yes. Or gets, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, interestingly enough, we have a resolution going through the legislature here that uh, generates a work working team to figure out how to use drones properly within all the custody issues and all the you know privacy and all the land ownership we've, we've had to tie those two together and uh, uh, we don't have I don't think a, have a climate change in, uh, motivation yet but uh, we should certainly tie these these together you know uh, well, when you said that um, a perfect test site for that to to practice what you want, want to do there in, in regards to drone 
would be quite a win because I don't think there's any regulation. <laughs> okay, that's great. So that's an <laughs> offer to us. Yeah, too. Okay. that's an offer <laughs> to you. Okay. If, with the consent of the mayor. Of course. And right. the leadership yeah. of quite a <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and the but, making sure it fits in the education yes. system. Yeah, there you go. So let's keep this conversation going. Mm. Uh, we, we, we're, our, our show is about out of time here. It does go by pretty quickly. Mm. Let me just thank you for coming on, first of all, mayor and commissioner of education and city manager. Uh, and uh, let's keep the conversation going. But can you can you give us one last word of, of uh, guidance? Did these guys, first of all, did they do the job right? That's number one, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, what would you like us to do collectively, Hawaii and, and uh, Marshall Islands together? What would be number one on the hit parade of things we ought to do together to move forward here? Wow, yeah. that is a good question. I have so many. We can get it next time. We'll get you on uh, by Skype on the on the show next time. And Brian Gumuru, Ibendra, just that continued uh, collaboration. You know? Collaboration. Yeah, excellent. Uh, because last time I came here, I went to a uh, mayor office. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we were actually on the uh, on the uh, their website. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's something that you gotta go and look. Okay. Try to, Primo, are you familiar uh, with Primo? It's a city here, Primo. but... The Pacific Risk Management Ohana that has an annual conference every year that talks about these things. We'll take care of that offline because we are out of time, mm -hmm. but Primo might be an opportunity to connect in with the evolving uh, themes and, and such that are taking place elsewhere as well. Anyway, Mayor, thanks for coming Thank on you. the Thank show. You, Ted. Thank you, and Ted. Thanks. Scott Paul. It was Paul. a pleasure. Thank and you very much. once again, Jilton. John. Elton. <laughs> I like to call you Elton John. <laughs> Elton. Okay. And we'll see you guys on Skype next time. Yeah. And we'll hook you up with uh, Greg Gorsh, uh, who is uh, good at environmental work on the beach. Mm -hmm. And then we'll figure out some way to make collaboration a permanent connection between us all. Thank you. Right. Okay. Mahar